Hey, get it, guys. It's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. So today we are going to be doing a cam belt on a UCF 20 engine. It's partway through the prep job for being fitted. So the intake manifold is off and the starter motor is off. The tablet covers are off and it's a bit of a honey in here. The sump is yet to come off because we're going to reseal that. And I took the alternator off the other day because I had it tested and it was stuffed. So whilst some of these components on this motor are really good, some of them aren't. But that's not the focus of this video. We're going to do this cam belt. So it is a hydraulic fan uh, pump engine. So it's a Japanese domestic engine. Uh, series 2, coil pointing to the front. So Series 2. And I've done a bit of a video about that. So I'm going to start. We're going to rattle some of the front off. So the hydraulic fan is not going back on in this job. We are intending to run a uh, air conditioning, so we will be changing that. Hydraulic fan is off there. We will be putting new bearings in that one, and that one is bent, so we will be changing that. These are lefty loosey, not lefty loosey, righty tighty. They are left hand thread, so go the other way. If you do that with a rattle gun, you will break off the snout. The alternator is already off, uh, but we'll pull this power steer pump off. So there's a bolt in here. And we better change the direction. That one there. And there's one up here. That's good. And then there's two back here. Extension was taking all my torque. So these pumps are really, really prone to failing. And you see this one has been dirty and yucky in the past, but it's been washed and cleaned. So we'll put a rebuilt one on. Now this thermostat housing is in uh, really good order. There's no blistering in it, it's still all black. Uh, by comparison to this one over here, which is changing colour, it's going brown. So that one's stuffed, this one is, is a good one. Whilst the thermostat's looking in pretty good order, I'm going to replace it just as maintenance because I want it to be right. Take this pipe off here. Now this housing here is going to be changed. We're going to take away the water hoses to the throttle body. So if you want to see that, I've done a video on uh, modifying the throttle body. So that hose is going to be rubbish. I'm going to whip this coil off. There's a 14 mil bolt back here. Now someone has been here before me and undone some of the bolts and the wiring loom had been partly disconnected. Now this grommet here, if it is at all in poor condition, 
then put a new one in. I had a VVTI motor, 3 uz that, that had fallen down inside the engine. Covers off. Other cover. <clears throat> And we'll get rid of this coil bracket at the same time. <coughs> There's a little clip just here. Now this wiring loom doesn't come out easily until this back cover's coming off, and I'm doing cam seals anyway, so that'll be fairly straightforward. There's a couple of 12 mil bolts to do here. Covers off. And we'll take the <coughs> tensioner off. <coughs> and we'll need this nut off here. I'd left that on there so I didn't lose it. It's the tensioner done. Next we'll do the hydraulic fan pump. So <coughs> here. <coughs> here. We'll swap to a 14, and we'll do this one. That's in my way. That one. Hydraulic fan pump comes off, and that won't be going back in, that's going in the rubbish bin. Now for the crank nut. Quite tight today, isn't it? Hey, that one's pretty tight. Yeah, dollar for a friend. <laughs> dollar friend. Yeah. yeah. I'll get my harmonic pellets puller. Pulley. Pulley puller. Pulley puller. Pulley puller. I'll get my pulley puller ready while I'm waiting. I'll let my compressor fire up. I do have a bigger rattle gun. I do have a three quarter if I really need to. I tell you, it's coming out and I'm gonna use my small one. I was on a roll. Mate, oh, it, it might not come undone. Nah, so I can't, I can't show you people how to do, I can't show people how to do that, can I? No. Nah, no flywheel. Alright, it's okay. While I'm waiting for my compressor to fire up, I'll take my rotors off. Is the Actually, distributor caps are in pretty good order. The rotors won't be though, because they never are. Don't get 
So here's the rotors, and they'll be cracked around the end here. Right there, cracked, cracked. Both of them, they're rubbish. So we'll put the new ones in. This crank pulley is coming off now. Okay, it's coming off. There it goes. Whoop, whoop. So it took me three goes, but I got it. <laughs> right, we are going to take this crank pulley off. Thanks for the, dis the distraction. And this pulley's just coming off by hand, pretty much. Look at this. Considering the nut was super tight, the pulley's just slipping off. Well, that's fantastic. I won't put the pulley puller away yet, because I might need it to pull the cam belt pulley off. Right, next cover. There should be one more, four bolts at the bottom here. Four bolts, beauty. Easy peasy, man. Trigger wheel, off. So that's pretty straightforward. And we'll take these Top covers off. Now these are labeled left and right. You'll see that this is left, even though this is my right hand, because this is the left hand side of the engine, and this is the right hand side of the engine. I need another trolley. No, no, I'm fine. Right, that's looking good so far. Cam nuts. Super tight, so I'm undoing these before I take the belt off. And then just leave them loose. So now to line it up on TDC. So I did have this lined up on TDC, but it turned over when I was um, undoing the nut, because it was so tight. There's the mark there. So the correct timing mark is actually tucked in here. We'll do a photo of that in a minute.
It should be there. There it is. We need to take this housing off as well. So we have the front of the engine off pretty pretty quickly. The timing marks are here, which line up with that one. Here, which line up with that one, and in here, and they line up with that there. And I'm going to call it uh, a night. We're going to pull this a little bit here out. Got to remember to put that one back in. We're going to call it a night uh, for the moment. And we'll be back tomorrow to fit up the cam out and finish this off. We're back into the cam out job on this 20 series. So this is a series 2 engine. I've loosened the cam pulleys and the crank pulley. I better just undo that one. See, I've got a, a big nut that I use to turn it over. So the timing marks are here, here, and here. We will be using a belt with the correct timing marks on it. So if it lined up on the marks, we'll just remove the tension. <coughs> Tensioner bolts are a special shank on them, so be aware of that. And then we can just slip the belt off. Now this is a Gen 2 or a Series 2 motor. It is an interference engine. So you don't go turning it over. The pulleys have got right and left marked on them. And they've got little keys. Dowel pin there and it's got right lit written on it. And it's got left written on it. <laughs> idler out. There's the Allen key. So the bottom idler has a 10 millimeter Allen key in it. And there's a trick in here. In behind here, there is a washer. This washer here. People often forget them, and it causes issues. I'm going to take these covers here off so we can get the cam seals. They can be washed. And removing the left hand one will also enable me to get this wiring loom out. Next we'll remove the water pump. So on this surface here, and this surface here they've got the stuff. <coughs> then bolts around the rest. <coughs> there and there, <coughs> nuts on the other side. 
So nut <coughs> down the bottom here. Now sometimes it got a bit, bit tight on the top o-ring. This one's going to be a real pain. Here it goes. Leave the water pump off. We'll do the, we'll pop the seals out once it's been washed. This motor is going to go out and be cleaned. We're going to be replacing the um, water temp sensor just because I'm in here. We'll tidy up this wiring loom through here where it's gone a bit funny. And then we'll put it all back together. The motor's now clean, so let's put some cam seals in it and a crank seal in it and put a cam out together. See how hard these seals are. Yeah, rock hard. So we better put a rear main seal on this one as well. All right, seals out. In the rubbish. Can we turn the radio off? Thanks. You're going to listen to me. You never. I was very good at that. Crank seal. Check it's going to somewhere that's clean and you can't over push it in because it goes into a spot, it goes onto a shelf, shoulder, and you check you don't turn the seal over. There we go. And just push it in. We're going to give it just a little bit more of a tap with a drift. And you notice I put a little bit of sealant on it just so it won't come out. They generally don't, but just being on the safe side. You're washing each one individually. A slightly smaller punch please so it can fit onto these cam seals <clears throat> can't quite get that one on my my fingers my fingers are a bit sore thank you
and I can go. <coughs> Can you uh, wash those for me, please? So we're just going to slide the O-ring in onto there. Beauty. Here he goes again. All right, then we're going to slide the water pump on. We might wait till the man stops sawing, actually. One down. Oh, good. So we're going to slide the water pump on. We've, <laughs> we've got the O-ring on the top and make sure that it just slips on properly. There it goes. Beauty. And put some bolts in. A little bit of Loctite on the bolts. You Loctite them for me and I'll slam them in the hole. Yeah. So the long one is here and here. We've actually got, uh, cool, thanks. Are those newish ones too? No, we're not going to do that. We'll just run these ones. Where's my rattle gun? <laughs> We've got to go the right way this time. Yeah, and there's a little nut too. Oh. Nut down here. Can you grab me the lower crank pulley and slide that on please? Want to manually torque them up? I oh, no, not the whole big, the, the just the one that the cam belt goes on. The cam belt lower pulley, sorry. Now I've already put some lube on that to make it go on nicely. Yeah, it slides really good. Really good, yep. And you can see here's the, the proper timing mark. Okay, we'll put these top covers on. If you can grab them. And I've already loctited the little bolts. Uh, now we need the covers that you just washed, thanks. And we better slide in the new wiring. And so I've already tidied up this wiring loom. And we better put that crossover pipe on. Actually, before we do that, we'll put this crossover pipe in. So if you can grab that for me, and we were going to change that sensor. So if you can pop that sensor in for me, and then we'll slide that in. Just making sure the crank sensor is nice and clean. And we're going to pop that back in now. Probably won't use the rattle gun on that one. Can fit up the idlers. So I put a Loctite, a little bit of Loctite on most of the bolts in this area. I really don't want them coming loose. Now I've already lubed the second idler and down where the uh, where it pivots and don't forget the washer that goes on the back of it. And after telling everyone I should have Loctite, don't forget the Loctite. Washer's in place. And it's a 10mm Allen key. 
The other idler's got a 14 mil head on it. Now I have had to replace a few or re-tap a couple of those because people have over tightened them. And this is the later model tensioner, so it goes back a bit further. Crossover. Nuts. Right, with the crossover pipe in place, we can put the wiring loom in. It sits in like so, and it has 10mm header bolt, 6x1, six, six now that sensor wasn't stuffed as such, but they tend to break and get brittle these days, so I like to replace them, and Probably that side. Other way around too. No, it doesn't. There it is. There it is. We're good now. There it is. And already locked tight it. Can I have some cam pulleys, please? And is that left or right? It's a right, so this is the right hand side. Now I'm not going to do these bolts up properly yet. We'll do them up properly once we've got the cam belt on. That's the left hand. We must remember to do, uh, do those up once we've got it back together. Cam belt, please. Probably want the new one. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Left cam. Right cam. So down the bottom here, uh, what we have is another little dot at the bottom so lots of people get that wrong but that is for this mark here on the timing belt it sits on there comes up to here on the left hand cam Gotta go one more. Can you get my um, Sabaru tool? It's over on board there. Yeah, keep going straight ahead there. There's a funny yes that to the le left a little bit. That thing. Right, and we just want to move this pulley around this way just a little smidgen, please. And it yep, just goes in there like that. So that you want to go that, that way? No, yeah. we want to go the other way. Oh. So wait. So I want to bring it around to the mark again. And the mark. Just let it off. It's here. Yeah. So bring that. Right around. Oop. You went too far, go the other way. Right, it's... Let's keep 
Oh, wait a minute. If I do that. Right. Bring it around. That's sitting tight. That's lovely. Then around the water pump. Then up to this side. Can you just put, thank you. So on this one, Mike, can you come around? We want to just slip. This one needs to come around just onto this mark. So just go back a bit. Come towards me a little bit. Whoop. And if you just move that tool out. And I'll just slip it on like so. Just push the belt on, job done. Easy as. Then one trick that I do is I get a large screwdriver. We've got that large screwdriver. We've got that abusive screwdriver. Uh, no, we do this. Bring some tension on. And I'm going to do two turns of the engine. We need two mil socket and my power bar. It's got tension on. So the left hand cam is lining up with that mark, going across to the back. The right hand cam is lining up with that mark on the front, going across to there. The belt is lining up with the little dot at the bottom and the dot on the oil pump cover is lining up with the dash on the pulley. We've got some tension on. It's one revolution. Now the timing belt marks on the belt won't line up again. There we go. Dash is lining up. I need to do one more. No, it isn't. There it is. Here's our mark. Lines up with there. Here's our mark. Lines up with there. Can I have the hydraulic tensioner, please? And these are the proper bolts for it. Thank you. I don't think I'd started this one. And we pull the pin. Job done. We better two of these bolts up. Grab that Sabaru tool, please. We will uh, give these a manual crank up. You go on that pulley. You holding it? Mm. Yeah. This one. Beauty. Right, that's what the cam out is now fitted. So that was pretty straightforward. We've done up the cam shaft pulleys. And the timing marks are correct. I'm happy with that. Now these 20 series are a interference engine, so you've got to get this correct. So the trigger wheel can go in now. I can put that 
bottom cover on. If you can grab that bottom cover for me. And I'll do these. Top, can I have the, the, the top cam sensor holders? And then I want that other, the other cover that goes around here. Cool. So we're going to put the cam sensor covers on. Oh, the cam holders. Cam sensor holders. So right hand on this side. And left hand on this side. And a bit of Loctite. I probably should have been showing the bolts, but make sure you put the same bolts that came out in the same places. Correct bolt. That's the short one, that's the long one. <laughs> yeah, okay, I got caught out. These are the long ones, these are the short ones. Deliberate mistake. All right, these are the long ones. These are the short ones. The rights are the longs, the left are the shorts. They're the correct bolts, I've just got them on the wrong sides. There we go. Good idea, we'll slide this little plasticky bit in now. Don't forget this little plasticky bit that goes in here. It's a real pain when you've got it all together and you've forgotten that. Have we got some bolts for this? No. Do you know what the bolts look like? No. They're little short blacky ones, like this. They look like this. Yeah. Can you get me the... Um, the tensioner for here, the... I probably should show, before I actually do this up, which way around the trigger wheel goes. So the trigger wheel goes, it's got a mark on the back where the cam belt's been sitting, but it also curves out away from the cam belt. Very bad habits. Bad habits, yes, when it gets the job done. It's a good thing. This is built for a headlight? No. Uh, no, it's a whole, the whole beer, a holder. <laughs> like the, the springy beast, please. Yeah. And we're going to put on, so with the hydraulic fan pump, that looked like this. We're not putting that on. Um, that's a whole nother video. They've got gears in there. People leave them on and they seize. So we're putting this idler unit on. So that's a much better unit. It looks like that one. Hold the wires out of the way and one can go in. Can you wash it? Oh, it's as washed as it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, thank you. And if you've done your water pump bolts correctly, this will sit on nicely, which I have. 
big nut here. And this bolt for the bottom here has got the uh, holder for the cam sensor wiring. And there's another long one that goes through the bottom of this tensioner. Can you get me the two plastic covers for the top please? And a nut at the top. Ah, uh, sorry, the next one, those funny shaped ones that you gave me before. Oh, wait, before we put those funny shaped ones, we better put the rotors in. Now with the rotors, they've got a, a little locator in here. I've seen people just put them on, put the screws in and do them up, and you can get them around the wrong way. So with the cam timing in the correct place, there is a mark here, and the rotor will point towards it, like that. And on this one, the mark is down here, and again, the rotor will point towards it. I probably won't do them up with the rattle gun. Well, not on video anyway. And then we put the distributor caps on. So the distributor caps are the same both sides, same as the rotors. What do I do with my screwdriver? This one, thank you. Top covers, please. Thank you. Okay, so both of these covers, when they go in, have got a, a little catch at the bottom there, where they sit in. And make sure that it goes on the outside of that little tab there. I've had people put them on the inside and they come in saying they've got a horrible knocking noise. And it's the trigger for the cam sensor coming around and touching the cover. And the grommet that goes through for the left hand cam sensor, if it is at all yucky, uh, then I recommend replacing them. I do so many that I do keep them in stock now. So these are quite a long bolt and there's a bracket on the front sensor wiring that bolts on here. So there's a big long bolt that goes through here. Should be another one of those big long bolts. Some nuts for here. And here. Bolt for there. I like to manually check all my bolts by hand, just to check that I know they're tight. That's normally got a clip in there, but that's gone at the moment. 
and that clips in there, we better grab that grommet. Also be very careful of when you put your, your accessory belt on that it doesn't rub on any of this wiring. I've repaired quite a few that have done that. So with the wiring into the middle of the cover, there is a, a bracket that goes on. And that clips the cam sensor out of the way. Then the wiring goes through this piece here. Now I have modified this front loom slightly to um, allow the hydraulic fan wiring to be my oil pressure wiring. And plug in the crank sensor. Now normally this would run down the front between the air conditioning pump, but I can pop through the back uh, because we're not running the hydraulic fan pump and the, wire, the hoses are gone. Right, we'll pop the crank pulley on. Now that's already been lubed up. And it should come on at TDC. <laughs> and the coil is going to go forward. It's there. So normally the coil would have a bolt in the front here. It doesn't have one, so we're going to make up a little bracket in there to bolt the coil in there nicely. We're going to put an alternator on. So on this particular engine, uh, I already tested the alternator and it had uh, passed its use by date. Well, not surprising, it was a 24 year old alternator. Uh, so it's getting a new one and I'm using the small body alternator <laughs> big nut nut And the power steer pump was leaking too, so it's getting a rebuilt power steer pump. That is the power steer, rebuilt power steer pump right there. So it slides on. Puts fluid all over my fingers. Bolts down the side. Now these are, are much easier to do on an engine stand than in a car. These ones down the side can be a little bit awkward in the car. All right, we're going to put in the bypass housing that the thermostat sits into next. So my ones have been modified. We have removed um, some of the water lines because it is for a conversion. So if you have a look in my uh, video on which water hoses to run, you will find that video. All right, so this top housing uh, I have modified for, um, because it's a conversion, we've welded up the water lines going to the throttle body. We're not going to be running them. You want to slide it into place and give it a bit of a wiggle and push it in firmly. I see a few break because people are being rough with them. And then just wipe off that extra, extra sealant. Now we're going to slide the coil bracket in. I prefer to remove the four screws for this coil bracket because it just makes it a little bit easier to get to. Slide the cam sensor wiring, which is a bit 
fall into pieces, but it'll still slide in here okay. With the coil bracket on, I'm going to pop the thermostat in. And always check your thermostat housings are in good order. Uh, I see a lot of them that they discolour and it causes problems. Next to do is the two pulleys on here. These ones are really noisy, so we'll do a separate video on changing those two bearings. So on with the uh, tensioner bearings. So I've just done a video on how to change these bearings. So this one's left hand thread, so make sure you go anti-clockwise. I'm pretty sure clocks go the same way all the way in the world, though digital clocks probably make it a bit trickier. So there we have the nearly finished job of a, a, a UCF20 non-VVTI cam belt. Of course in a car you've got leads and tapper covers and all the other stuff that's normally in the car. And you'll be fitting up an air conditioning pump, which is a whole heap of fun. Uh, this uh, We don't do a lot of, of normal cars. Most of ours are conversions. So this is motors getting prepped for a 2003 Hilux. So hence it's being done on the stand. We're also doing a uh, starter and a whole lot of other bits to it. So check out my other videos to find that. But I hope that's been helpful. We're learning about how to do a cam belt, water pump and tensioners, on a uh, UCF 20 uh, non VVTI, pretty much the same as uh, the Gen 1, so this is a Gen 2 engine. So, if you've uh, enjoyed this video, make sure you push the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, we'll talk to you again. Catch you later.